In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a realistic dog ear in graphite. Hi, I'm Peggy, the artist behind Peggy Kovic Fine Art. Welcome to my channel. Hello, everybody. All right, today we're going to work on the ear and drawing the natural hair, the realistic look of the hair on this Brit's ear. And I'm I'm going to start by mapping in my darks. My pencil is, I'm using a 2B, a 2B or not 2B. I know that is such a stupid joke, but that's what I think of every time when I think of the 2B pencil. So, so we have darks, um, so I'm going to just start mapping in, uh, but first actually I'm going to remove a lot of my graphite because my drawing is really, really dark because I decided this time to use transfer paper. I'm not too happy with doing it this way. I also mapped in a lot more of my details than I've ever done before. I don't think I'll do this again either because it not only took a long time to draw out all the details and then to actually transfer all the details I probably, I don't know, I think it doubled my drawing time of drawing all of my details first on um, printer paper and then I transferred it from the printer paper onto my actual surface. I won't draw on my actual surface because most of the time that causes problems if you have to erase and I do a lot of erasing and a lot of correction. So I usually draw on either uh, tracing paper or I'll draw on printer paper. But yeah, I'm, and as I'm babbling here, I'm trying to soften up my uh, blue tack so that I can actually remove some of these graphite lines. So, okay. Oh, and you probably can see, or maybe you can't see, but it's cold and I'm wearing a robe. So, <laughs> welcome to my house, welcome to my studio, welcome to my bathrobe. And thank you for joining me. Hopefully uh, I can assist you in how to draw realistic graphite animal fur. Yeah, usually what I do is I don't map in all of these major type of details and I um, draw them as I go, as I come up to them. We'll just see how this works. All right, here we go. Mapping in the darks. And just so you know, I'm not scribbling back and forth like this. I'm doing this real gentle, one direction, the direction the fur grows, strokes. The five, five pencil method calls this a tapered stroke. I've heard it called a hatching line. I've heard it called a gradation stroke. There are so many different names for the same thing. But basically what I'm doing is just real soft stroking. I have a really light hand and as I'm drawing, I'm rotating my pencil so that I keep my point. I don't get any flat spots. I know where is my stroke a really 
hard stroke. See, what I'm doing, basically, is I'm doing this. You see that? <laughs> I don't even know if you can see that. If I go the other direction, I do this. You see how there's no start or end on these strokes? I'm not going like this. I'm going like this. See the difference? This versus this. This you have starts and stops. So then when you start combining them together, it looks really choppy. But with this, it's just a real smooth transition from one side to the other. And then when you start adding your little bit more graphite or you can come in with a um, darker pencil, add more graphite, you can add graphite to the top, you can add graphite to the bottom. You see how it just blends really nicely together? You can come in here and blend out a little bit. You can come in, uh, take a little bit out with your mono zero. And see, it's already looking. Let's get this stupid thing out of there. <laughs> and it's already starting to look more realistic, more like hair, more like really nice. So yeah, that, that's basically what I'm doing. You see how that actually kind of looks more realistic, more like a hair? So that's what I'm doing here. Because so I'm just doing, and I need to <laughs> sharpen my pencil a little bit. So then I just sit here and I build up the dark. And this is where the ear comes into the head. So it, the ear is overlapping the head. And if you think about the rules of light, as it goes away from the light further, and see the light's coming down kind of like this. So here's the ear, and the ear is overlapping the side of the face. So it's going to be darker underneath here because the light isn't getting in there. So you gotta bring in your shadows. You bring in your shadows correctly and you add them correctly and that's how you get the depth in your drawings. And this is just my first layer just like color pencil with graphite, I add a lot of layers. Okay. Can't wait till I get a better camera set up. I'm actually recording this tonight on my iPad. I'm just using the camera app. Uh, let's see if I can talk. Using the camera option on my iPad. Ooh. Unfortunately, it's snowing and getting darker outside. And my light, I seem to have a shadow here. I'm sorry about that. 
My lighting isn't the best tonight. Let's see if I can change that a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better, but not really. doing Missy? Miss Missy? Are you playing with Miss Molly? You must be because Molly's sitting here twitching her tail. Missy's a little feral cat that we found in our hay barn right after Mama uh, weaned her. And she was caterwauling so loud, and it was negative 14 degrees outside. She was cold. She was hungry. And she was not a happy camper. So even though she was a feral, it didn't take much to catch her. Um, she stayed, uh, she was pretty happy to get warm and fed. And now, of course, she's one of our family. She's turned into a pretty cool cat. We have a cat that fetches. Have you guys ever had a cat that fetched? She's the first for us. Oh, by the way, she's a Maine Coon cross. And post in the comments if you want to see pictures of her because um, I take lots of pictures of her. I, she's so cute. So that's my initial layer of 2B. Now I'm going to come back through and do another layer of 2B. And apply just a little bit more pressure. Like I said, I have a really, really light hand. And sometimes that light hand bites me. Because then I have trouble getting the darks. because a lot of realistic has to do with the contrast. You need to have your contrast. And that's the biggest thing that I see not being done. And I'm even guilty of it, is I don't push my contrast far enough. And especially people that are just starting to draw is they're afraid of the dark. Like I said, I'm also that way. I have to force myself to draw darker. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with a 4B. If I can find my 4B. There's my 4B. And things are moving. All right. Oh, you guys gotta be really shut up this way. Still, 
I able to see, I believe. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. And yeah, now I'm doing a little bit of back and forth stroke. Just trying to get the graphite laid down. Now we're going to go up and this is a dark spot right here too. So we're going to go ahead and lay in our dark there. Um, back to the TV, by the way. And as previously mentioned, the direction of the fur. You always draw your strokes in the direction the fur goes. Yeah, I'm really shadowing myself. I need two lights. I really apologize for that. Currently, I only have the one day light. And it's off to my right right now. And the cord doesn't stretch far enough for it to be off to my left. So, with my setup currently the way it is, I need a few things. All right. And see already, just doing these little V's. <laughs> Makes the dimension of the hair. Adds more depth.
I'm sorry, I'm concentrating. So as you notice, I'm not really babbling anymore. Do you ever draw shapes and then don't have a clue where those shapes came from? <laughs> Is that an odd question? That's kind of how I feel right about now. I drew these in and now I don't even see them in the reference photo. So I'm like, what on earth was I drawing? Usually I kind of try to draw what I see and I I don't approach my drawings with here's the head and it's a circle and here's the body and it's an oval and I can't draw that way. I guess I do a little bit but I don't know. I draw kind of here's an eye and let's draw in the eye and I try to draw what I see and but yeah I have never been able to draw with a grid and I've never been able to draw where you draw your basic shapes and then get your animal out of the basic shape I guess I'm a little weird that way I'm actually drawing exactly what I see in the reference photo. Even the hair. Really mapping in some darks and working on getting the getting the form right. And I've said before, here, it's just a snapshot in time, your photo. And you could have a gust of wind the next second, and your hair is completely different than what's in the photo. That's the way I approach hair, or try to anyways. I do all my strokes in the same direction as the hair, and I try to make it look like hair. And right now I'm just kind of laying in my darks, like I said. So we've got... Right now this really doesn't look like hair, does it? <laughs> it will. At least I hope it will.
sometimes my drawings kind of draw themselves, but right now this one's kind of giving me some trouble. I'm not sure what I'm seeing, what I'm doing, so I'm just kind of attempting to map in some darks and some lights. And a lot of times when I do that, then my drawing tells me what, what it needs. look at what I drew and then I step back or lean back in my case right now and I look to see if it makes sense does it make sense with what I'm doing because it's definitely not what I'm seeing I never draw hair exactly the way I see it in a reference photo. This is my Amano Zero Pombo. I'm going to use that to bring back something I removed on accident. What I did there is I'm using an emery board and I'm uh, basically sharpening my mono zero and removing the graphite that was on it so that I can bring up these highlights and the shape of this curl because this ear is curling around the hair right there. Not the ear, the hair is curling around itself right there. So I'm trying to capture that. It's kind of like he's almost got a dreadlock right here. And I'm debating whether I want to put it in. It might be more work than I want to do. But this also might be a characteristic of this dog. I want to keep that kind of stuff evident. So I try to try to keep the likeness, try to keep the special characteristics. This Brit is definitely a beautiful dog with some very unique markings. So 
Yeah, I decided to draw on the ear versus try to get any unique markings around the face and the nose. Taking a break from the unique markings. Where did that come from? Who knows? I draw some things that I have no clue. Like I said, I just drew something and I don't even know where I popped it out of. As you can see, it's just uh, a lot of layering, a lot of shapes, drawing shapes and shading them, putting hairs on top, bringing hairs up underneath. If it's underneath, it's going to be darker, so you add a little more or, uh, graphite to make it darker underneath and to bring out the layer on top. Keep on fiddling with it until it's how you like it. It's how you want it to look. And this is still just my base layer. I'm still just lightly attempting, lightly attempting to map in some hair pattern, hair shapes, hair places. And I think you can see, I'm not drawing every single hair. But 
every single one of these techniques that I'm showing you, the way I'm drawing, this can all be applied to colored pencil. It can be applied to your um, watercolors, pretty much anything. You draw a shape, you shade in the shape, you draw another shape. If one of your shapes isn't right, you erase, or use, use your zero eraser or some other type of eraser to bring back some of what you're trying to accomplish. See here, I'm, I'm not drawing, like I said, I'm not drawing every hair, but I'm trying to accomplish some of the flow. So I look at a spot on the reference photo and I say, hey, that looks kind of cool. Let's see if we can put that in here. It's kind of this curl right here. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over having upper respiratory infection, which was pretty, pretty horrendous on the bod. And uh, usually I only cough when I talk, so. I'll shut up now. Now I'm going to start switching to the 4B. Kind of getting in some more of these darker spots where it's the darkest, where it's the deepest. This will add depth and dimension to the drawing. Add some graphite, go off, go off on a tangent right there. Wow, I do not like that right there. Good old four B. There's actually appears to be something in the paper right there. It's just not letting me put my graphite down very well. So I'm going to bring out my Jakar battery operated eraser. There, that's a little bit better. Normally I don't do this until the end. But that piece was not cooperating. Again, I clean it off on my emery board. There we go. That's much better.
and see how easy it is to add add and take away if you don't like something take it away try it again try something else I'm going to take a break. Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, one thing I was noticing as I came back was that I've got a funky transition going on right here. Uh, right here. And it's because of the dark meeting the light. But the light is too light right now. And the transition needs to be changed just a tad. to bring in the mid-tone going into the light and part of this is because of that stupid graphite transfer paper it leaves more graphite than if you coat the back of a piece of paper with your 7b 8b whatever b um, and then just trace down your your image from that and I don't have as much trouble removing it as I do removing this graphite transfer paper transfer it's like graphite is so much stronger and it doesn't come off it's almost like carb maybe it's a carb more of a carbon paper anyways it it's hard to come off We want a gradual transition into the light and not that stark line that I had. That was horrible. I didn't even realize it was doing that until I saw it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks horrible. But of course, we're not even close to being finished with this drawing. Not even close. You see here again, I've got that little oh, he's got little knots, knobs sticking up off the top of his head. I wonder if that's a characteristic of a Brit. <laughs> that's kind of cute. Oh. And then he's got these longer little hairs coming out right in this area. <laughs> not sure. He's not my dog, so I don't know. Alright, so 
that a better transition? That's a much better transition. Okay, so as you can see, that's pretty much, I mean, we have an ear. Um, I'm definitely gonna add a lot more layers to it and I will be filming that as well, but I'm, I'm done for right now. And thanks for stopping by.